Hello. Happy Friday, Jeff. Happy Friday. Welcome yeah. to Blair and Barker. All right. We're all in a good mood today. How about that? We're in a good I'm mood. I'm not today. me so much. I got a little bit of a cold, I think. Yeah, I know you do. I, so I'm struggling. Uh, don't be afraid to stay away if you got a cold. <laughs> Dude. Didn't, didn't we learn that with COVID? Don't come into the office when you're not feeling good? Yeah. I mean, it's not like Does I... Does apply to everybody? Okay. It, Dude, it's not like I mm. it's not like I haven't done two hours of radio by myself. I mean, yeah, it's not it as like, good with as like with eight. me in here though. Well, no, it's not. Okay, let's be honest. It, it's not the uh, <laughs> the, the content uh, suffers greatly as you. I mean, I appreciate you. Uh, you never want, let want me. the man up, but I'm here for you, buddy. Hmm? I know, but you know, you're getting to that age now where you got to <laughs> be a little uh, you got to be a little careful about. Yeah, it's it's here to the subway. That's what does it. It's like yeah, if you're wondering, by the way, if you're seeing this, it is boy perfect form. If you're seeing, if Move you're, it or lose. If you're uh, if you're on like Bloor, anytime between six and seven, keep your eyes open because this guy might be running by to get to the subway yep. so he can get to wherever he parks his car. Yeah, I don't go around either. I go right through it. Oh, I've been with you. You do. Yeah, you you do. <laughs> You, uh, yeah, delicacy uh, is not one uh, of your strengths. Anyway, stay hot. <laughs> there you go. Stay hot indeed. It is hot. So the Jays are off to uh, Toronto West, mm. call it that, Seattle, yeah. uh, to take on the Mariners tonight in the first of a three-game series on sports. It's always on Sportsnet. You know that. And, of course, I, I would presume that there would be the hordes of Vancouverites and I yes, guess folks from Calgary. As I have well talked to down. somebody that's there that said it is overran it's over with Jays fans. Yes. Well, I wonder. So they're going to they're going to well represent. You know, which is great. You know, and, and this is it's wonderful. <clears throat> I never got to go to that. I'm so I'm so mad about that part of my career that I didn't get to go experience that. Yeah, I've I've been there a couple of times when Jays fans are there. Right. How it, is it? It's uh, it's crazy. It, it's 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 absolutely it's absolutely crazy. Huh. Uh, I mean, for me, I've always thought Seattle's kind of an overrated city. That's just me. Um, but, no, you know, listen, is, I'm going to tell you something. Given wrong? given everything that's gone on here, I think this is going to be a breath of fresh air for the Blue Jays to get yeah. to a place yeah. where they're going to have a ton of people cheering for them. Unless they get swept. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're gonna play I come good. in they'll all play, optimistic. Play, Bring play. Eric Kratz, host they'll of Foul good. Territory on. Yeah. I come in all positive, and you like, <laughs> <laughs> takes you two minutes to do it. Oh, uh, yeah. Mr. Kratz, how you doing? Blair Barky, What's how up? are you guys? Happy Canada Day. What? <laughs> no, no. It's the 1st of July is Canada Day. Uh I uh, know. Did we talk? Did we talk? Okay, well, then? That, that's fair. Well, then well, you know what? Happy 4th, buddy. Happy 4th, yeah, buddy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Uh-huh. Okay. I, whatever. Yeah. Whatever. No, I'm in Canada right too now. Too late now. Canada Airwave. Yeah, I, well, I appreciate that. I apologize for being so... Uh, so yeah, you were a little snippy. Well, yeah. You yeah. were a little snippy there. I was. I, Barky says they might get swept <laughs> just because Barky brings some honesty to your life and then you get you get mad at me i can take that i can take it on my shoulder yeah yeah listen there's a, there's a lot of things i need in my life Honesty's not one of them um <laughs> hey uh i know you pay attention to what goes on here uh so what's going on here with this team <laughs> what's your view i mean i think i know what the idea i think i know what the remedy is frankly but mm. it's way above my pay grade um what are you seeing the remedy is different than what I'm seeing. Let's put it that way. Okay. The, what I'm seeing, and yes, I do pay attention because, yes, I was fortunate enough to be drafted by the Blue Jays, so you always have a place in your heart for Toronto. And I said Barky was honest, so I'll be honest. Beginning of the season, I thought this team had and has the firepower to be a playoff contender. Did I think they were going to win the division? No, but I'm going to be honest. And I'm going to say I had them in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I had them coming through with this pitching staff. On defense will be down a little bit. I thought maybe their offense wasn't going to be like crazy go nuts, but I thought they were going to be much better than they are. And that brings me to my remedy. Some people need to be honest and say exactly what I just said. I was wrong. This didn't work out. Now let's make it better. Yeah, I think that's fair. But uh, here's what I'll say. I, I, 
I think sometimes when – Kratz, you've been on some really good teams. You've been on some teams with some superstars. And, you know, sort of when there's pressure for the superstars to be those guys that lead the charge – and they don't consistently to start the season. This is sort of how it looks. And this leads to me to my question. Bo Bichette has struggled for almost just about 300 at-bats. Kratzy, that's a long time for a dude that's led the American League and hits two, two different times. Why do you think that is? And have you ever been with a superstar that struggled this long? I mean, are we calling and, him a superstar? Yeah, I think so. Well, uh, mm. Ross Atkins did. So oh, yeah. I, why why shouldn't I? Right. I'm I'm going to call him that. So I, have you been with somebody who is as good as he is offensively, had a slow start, almost 300 bats in, turned it around and had a good finish to his season? Not at this not at the prime of their career. I've done it. I've seen it with guys who are coming like you know a year and a half off a off an MVP, and then ah oh, what the heck. Mm-hmm. Ball- Find out, ah, they got a little knee thing that they needed cleaned up. And then they turn it back around. I, I don't see it. I, I, would love, I would love to be the one to say I know what it is. I, I, I just don't see why. He's got bat speed. Yep. None of those metrics. It just seems like, and because we're talking about it, and this is why – I guess I'm on a show. I'm supposed to talk about it, and people believe that I have the answer, which I don't. Mm-hmm. But maybe there was some discussion of, hey, here's your extension. This is what we think you're worth. And he said, wait a minute. This is what you think I'm worth? And maybe there's a lack of motivation in the six mm-hmm. for a superstar, like, like the GM said, that maybe they didn't offer superstar money. Maybe they didn't offer what he's worth. You know, Barky, they yeah. only paid you a million dollars to play professional baseball. So they got a million dollars worth of an effort. If you offer somebody $30 million, they're going to play $30 million worth. And I'm not saying that that's what Bo Bichette's doing. I'm saying that there has to be something that we don't see. And is it an injury? I have a hard time believing it. He's playing. Is it yeah. a change of scenery? He's, he's out there. Yeah, he's out there. He knows the value mm-hmm. is to be out there. Yeah, it is a change of scenery the easy? Oh, I watched baseball for fifteen years. Change of scenery candidate. You know, that's just because somebody's struggling. If he was hitting three twenty, leading the league in hits again. You'd be like, change of scenery. The only scenery he's changing is a different zip code because he's about to get paid. Crassy, so you don't believe in change of scenery? Like you, you've been in enough locker rooms, seen enough guys that are struggling change teams and it just that's not part of it because we have heard that we have heard people write about that that say a couple of guys like vladdy and Bo, not this vladdy now that we're seeing but the vladdy that was a month and a half ago that might be part of a change of scenery you're not buying that you don't believe in that i do believe in it when it's done not ignorantly here's a change of scenery this guy hammers velocity and all he's seeing is breaking balls. Now we put him in a lineup that puts him in a, you know, instead of batting second, he's hitting fifth or sixth where the percentage of velocity goes up to 62% instead of 51% when he's hitting in the two hole. Now that change of scenery isn't necessarily because he's playing in a different colored uniform. It's because he's playing in a different lineup that the expectations of a quiet player of the expectations of an entire organization are not on a kind of introverted player who has elite skills, maybe average defensive skills, but elite skills at the plate. And he's not expected to do things that possibly are on his shoulders. So is that because he's in a different uniform or is it because he's in a better, better spot for his skill set? That's a great answer. Yeah. That's, yeah. So you do know. You said you didn't know, but you do know. That's, no, a, that's I, I a perfect get, answer. I, I, get, I, get what, yeah. I get what he's saying. I, yeah. I completely. Totally I, makes I completely sense. Understand. Absolutely. I completely understand it. Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, I've covered guys that I absolutely convinced were change of scenery guys. And <laughs> it is a simple, it, yeah. And, you know, it's one of those, I mean, quite frankly, it's one of those BS sports writer, uh, generalizations that we sometimes make momentum and you know and 
got out of the happy clubhouse <laughs> and all that. But I have covered guys that I thought were change of scenery guys, and you know what? They changed scenery and they stunk. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, <laughs> it probably it probably is more. It is you know look, look at Tim Anderson. Tim not not to not to really you know beat a dead horse. The poor guy's gone through things in his life that we don't know, but in Chicago. Oh, change the scenery, change the scenery, change the scenery. Went to Miami. Well, he changed the scenery. There's a lot of good scenery down in Miami. <laughs> yeah, there but is. Hmm. It's the exact same. It's the exact same result. So it's it's it probably is more often change the scenery doesn't work out, mm-hmm. and we're just trying to be positive and and honest about players. But how old is Bo Bichette? Twenty five. Twenty-five, Sparky, hmm. you were barely shaving a, your beard at twenty-five. Like yep. we're talking, like this dude's got years ahead of him, and I'm sad that it's not working out for him in Toronto. But it's not, and that is the reality that it's not right now. Three hundred at bats, three hundred at bats have gotten worse men fired. <laughs> yes, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. So that's that's. I think that we lose Eric. No, no, I'm oh, yeah, there. Okay, okay. No, I just uh, blanked out. Dramatic pause. Dramatic pause. <laughs> you mute. You muted me. I did not mute you. I <laughs> we would never. Do we that. would never mute you. <laughs> no chance. Um, I, Some I, I, people would like to. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not, not true. Not, not in this show. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm looking at, uh, at, and I'm not saying this, uh, you know, to poke fun or anything. I mean, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at your baseball reference page and the amount of moves you made oh, in your career. And the reason mm-hmm. I'm asking you this, you were part, and I, I mean, you were a free agent a couple of times around the trade deadline, things of that nature. But I think that July, in two, 2014, you were traded with Liam Hendricks, right? To the Royals. I was. For, for Danny Valencia. What, Eric, what is it like for players as the trade deadline approaches and, peop, and, and they're hearing things? You know, you're hearing that they, or you can read the tea leaves. I mean, I, I think players are smart enough that around, the third week in July, they can kind of look at where their team is and kind of put two and two together. What's that like, though, in season? Well, watching other guys go through it is is the perspective that I'll give you because anytime I got traded at the trade deadline, they weren't sitting there going, oh, man, it is, it is the Eric Kratz trade. I bet he's going to be one of the guys that we're going after. Mm-hmm. No way. The only reason I got traded to the Royals in that case was because their backup catcher was struggling. Salvador Perez plays every single day. And Danny Valencia was became expendable because of a choice he made in the clubhouse. Right. And so, you know, so for me, it, it doesn't really apply. But when I watch other guys go through it, some guys, it really, really weighed on them. I saw, a, I saw Cole Hamels. We went into L.A., and it seemed like Cole in 2013 was going to get traded or extended. And I remember we left. We left Philly to go to L.A., and he was like, man, I wonder if this is the last time I'm going to be a Philly in Philly. Hmm. And we went to L.A., and I remember him saying, it was right around the All-Star break, and L.A. was, you know, they were up and coming. This is 13. and he was like, he was like, I kind of like this place. You know, not, not asking me anything. He didn't right. need my advice. More of so, like, he was just talking out loud. And it was a cool glimpse for me to see what superstars, Cy Young candidates, they go through when they're at an organization for a long time. And they're being honest. Like, they think about that stuff. And does that affect them? I don't think it necessarily affects them consistently uh, on the mound or in the box, but I think it's something that does weigh on them that is heavier than they think until they're pulled out of the situation. And then it's like, ah. so it's just another thing that you kind of deal with as a player. Kratzy, we talk about uh, Chris Bassett sometimes getting traded and, and what, what, you know, how he would fit into different teams, maybe like the Brewers, 
and be a nice veteran guy going over there, National League, spinning that kind of stuff. But I wonder him being used to, because he throws a plethora of different kinds of pitches and the pitch calm and being used to throwing to the same kind of catcher and, you know, sort of that rhythm and timing back and forth. I wonder how a guy like that would take going somewhere else trying to figure out all the stuff that he tries to do to release the baseball and be competitive and give that team who traded for him a productive outing. Do you think he'd have a tough time doing that in a short period of time? All that you said there is all things that go through people's heads. Yeah. From from the front office to Chris Bassett to the the manager to the pitching coach. All that stuff is – goes through their head when they're trying to make these decisions. Probably one of the reasons starting catchers don't normally get dealt at the trade deadline because you're going to teams that are looking to win. Yeah. And I'm not saying yeah. that a, a Danny Jansen can't help another team, can't help the Phillies right now while JT Real Muto's out. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's tough to assimilate yourself into a team that is winning. Chris Bassett shows up in Milwaukee. If that happens, that's great for the Blue Jays. That's great for Chris Bassett. It's great for Milwaukee. Milwaukee's been doing some stuff. Mm -hmm. They've been pulling, they've been hooking their pitchers in the fourth and fifth inning, Mm -hmm. and they've been having success with it. So now the manager has to make the adjustment. Now the bullpen has to make the adjustment. Now Chris Bassett needs to make sure he just throws his game. So it is, it's tougher than you think. And this is why GMs, don't want to give up the farm, except a Chris Young last year. So, haha, an ex player understands what a Chris Bassett does for a team. And it pushed the Rangers to a World Series. So, can a Chris Bassett push the Brewers to a World Series? Absolutely, he can. But it's not just, well, we'll just take the best pitcher out there. Gee, Willikers, we'll take Mason Miller. Like you just can't get, you just can't take somebody's best player and be like, okay, cool, we'll take him. There's a lot that goes into it. You know, Eric, one of the things I, I wondered about Chris because you know he does throw eight different pitches, yeah. and we kind of ran into a situation here with Tim Mazel where I think we have John Schneider on here, and I and I think everybody kind of came to an agreement that one of the issues with Tim Mazel, in addition to the loss of velocity, is the fact that he just pitched in the American League East so much that you're getting to a point <laughs> where he's coming in a game and here's a dude who's, you know, got 12 at-bats against him in the yeah. last two years and all this. Now, if Chris Bassett goes to another league, goes to the National League with his eight pitches, is that is that a bonus for him? Or with video and everything now, is that just not that much of a factor, right? I may not have seen him in person but I've got you know three years of, of stuff on an iPad that I can look at so I can at least get an idea of what he's like. And then I can go into that, what's that machine they call, whatever the hell it is, track, track man or whatever, where I can program Chris yep. Bassett in and I see his pitches coming. Is there anything like that? Like, is that still a thing? Mm. <sighs> yes, it's still a thing because there's still plenty of guys that can't, can't uh, equate what they see on the iPad into real life so they want to see it they want to get their own eyes on it so that there's a thing there's a thing with that but chris bassett was a met so there's dudes Mm. in the national league that know what chris bassett brings but this is why he's a trade chip he throws a lot of pitches which makes him successful the best part of pitch every time i talk about pitch com and like the pitch clock i think about this guy yes i mean it was it was shake central like it was just it was shake to shake. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we're going to shake all those pitches just to get back to the one you first called. You know, so he's out there thinking. And that is one of his one of his attributes. Yeah, he's turned it into a weapon. Velocity I, that he got. He has turned it, it into a it weapon. Totally is. Mm-hmm. Totally is. And that's, that's why he's valuable. He will be valuable to a team when, when the Jays trade him. Cratchy, let's talk about something fun, the the home run derby. I, uh, Vladdy announced that he's not going to be in the home run derby this year. Is, is that a big deal for players, you think? Any any player you've ever talked to that's a really good hitter that can hit home runs, that's went into a home run derby, came out of it and said, man, that totally screwed me up. There's no chance I'm getting a hit in the second half. Or does it matter? Are they overthinking it? Are they lying? They're not lying. No? Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge. Look at his August after the home run derby. That wasn't because of the home run derby. It's because he hurt himself in the home run derby. Yeah. He hurt his shoulder in August in 2017. 
he will not go back onto that stage again until maybe it's in Yankee Stadium or maybe it's his last year of his career. There is a – A.J. Pruszynski on our show was like, oh, that's dumb. You take swings all the time. It, <laughs> yeah. shouldn't, it shouldn't matter. I'm like, it matters. These dudes are lathered. They are lathered up yeah. there, and it is a different level. But I have heard guys who want to do the home run derby – Pete Alonso is built for the home run derby. Mm-hmm. That is an absolute horse. Uh, they call him Oso, so he is a bear. Yeah. But Todd Frazier, who I just an hour ago just got done doing the show with, Todd Frazier loved it. He said he said it wore him down. It would absolutely wore him out, but not to the point where he couldn't recover in two days. It just it wears you down, and does it does it ruin your swing? I haven't heard anybody say that's why, like, actually, hey, this ruined my swing. I've just seen guys, you know, and they always make that correlation. Mm -hmm. I remember Juan Soto went to home run derby, and he wasn't doing well. At the end of the home run derby, he started just driving balls to the opposite field. Like, he was just hitting BP. Remember that. And then he went off in the second half. I think he had, like, a 502 on base percentage in the second half. Like, crazy. So, uh, it. If you get hurt, like Judge got hurt, yes, <laughs> the home run derby affected your swing because you're hurt, and now your lead shoulder is not as strong. If you just don't do good in the second half, but you don't have a lingering injury from it, no, I don't think that's – Do that's you like, do you like watching the home run derby? I know they've, they've changed the rules already. They've, they've changed it again this year, right, where it's the – it's the 40 pitches in four minutes. Am I right? I, I looked that up. I quickly glanced over it. But I know it's different than last year. And I, I, don't, I think they're running out of ways to change it, right? I mean, this is probably sooner than later going to be it. You've got so many swings and so many, um, uh, so much amount of time. Do you like it? Do you think this is love sort it. of it? You do love it. Huh. I love it. So do I, I love the home run derby. Yeah, I, do I love the dunk contest. I love all these contests. Anything – I think something that we do in baseball or that we do poorly in baseball is showcase the talent. And this is a showcase. I don't want to get to the NFL where we're having like wiffle ball games with big leaguers in them. You know, they're having flag football competition. I'm saying show their talent, show how far a player can throw a baseball, whoever that is, whoever wants to join in, have it be against a minor leaguer who has, ridiculous arm strength then have then have a competition where they break where they break targets all over the field they're starting to do it in the futures game and i'm super juiced i'm going to be part of that and watching it and being there yeah like the skills competition is where it's at aka hockey look at hockey hockey does it and i love watching the slap shot competition the target competition smashing those plates we need that yeah, it's you know I I, I remember uh, being at a uh, it was a news conference with the commissioner I, years ago when they were talking about the All Star game. It was a news conference at the All Star game, and they were talking about mm-hmm. skill competitions, throwing the ball the far, this throwing the ball to targets mm-hmm. and all that. And my only and my only thought process was, do I want a guy throwing out his arm, yeah. you know, airing it out mm-hmm. six times in a row to try to hit a target? Because you might do that. You know, in, in a game once. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, th- those skills, I don't know if I would be in favor of. Seeing who can throw the ball the farthest, the quickest release. That, to me, is something where you might hurt yourself. But, I mean, I'm with you. I, I it, One of the reasons that I like the home run derby is because you do get to see those guys in kind of a relaxed, competitive atmosphere. And we see them, but I think there are a lot of young fans that watch that, and they still get a kick out of it. They still get a kick out of seeing dudes hit bombs. Yep. Blair, are we part of the are we part of the helicopter generation? Are we are we worried about hurting players because they you don't want to see who can throw a rock the farthest? I mean, I'm like, kinda. This yeah. Is, this is this is the kids' game. This is a kids' game. If you think you're gonna get hurt, if Aaron Judge feels like he's gonna get hurt doing the home run derby, a hundred percent do not go in it. There is dudes that want to do this. And that can have so much fun doing it. Yeah. If Mason Wynn is wants to come out and field a ground ball and crow hop it to first base <laughs> and hit 103, and then Ellie De La Cruz says, whoa, 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 Poppy, I can do that. Now this is what mm. competition is. This is showing off 
the elite skills that the greatest league in the world has. So let's showcase it. People are going to get into this. And if you know what? People are like, well, he's making $25 million. I would hope he doesn't hurt himself there. Okay. Then he won't go in. But if he wants to do it, let's bring on more competition and more showcase. No, that is yeah. that, that, that that is a great point. Look, it's going to come down. If the players are in favor of it, then I'm okay with it. There you go. You know, yeah. seriously. Yep. The players are in favor of it, and I think that's the way we all Lead the to. charge, Kratzy. Kratzy, good stuff. Hey, enjoy the prospects. I always yeah. tell people, you know what? That's the, the best part of the weekend. I love really covering is. the prospects yeah. game. And I was trying to figure out. I would love to see baseball prime They're time hungry, Kratzy. Somehow. That's what it is. They're hungry. They want to go out there and perform well. Beautiful thing. They haven't. Exactly. They haven't gotten hurt yet. They're like, hey, mm-hmm. I'm going to go. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, how many games do we play? Can we play two? <laughs> no, like, I'm with they, you. <laughs> and it is that I'm, I'm going early. They asked me if I wanted to go early and do the future stuff and everything. I'm like, <laughs> does a bear poop in the woods? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's no. awesome. It'll be a good time. Listen, have, have fun, fun man. Travel safely. Thanks good, for doing this. Good hearing you. See you, man. Appreciate y'all. Happy Canada Day. Thanks, you too. Buddy. You Happy too. fourth. All right, fifth, then. Fifth on the fourth, fourth and the fifth. Thanks, man. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, 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 I know I get, I always say this all the time, but I'm telling you, if you get it, if, first of all, I love the all-star game. I, I loved covering it all the time. It, it, if you ever get a chance to go to an all-star game, it is tremendous, but the, but the futures game, it's gotten better the the last couple of years. Well, the U S against the rest of the world. Yeah, it's way better. And you know what is amazing is, you know, the, the young dudes that come out and pitch, yeah, they let it eat. Like then, oh. you know, it's not. Oh yeah, they're not lollipopping it in there. Like no. they, you know, they want to show no, off a little bit. It's a competitive because they're game. trying to get to the big leagues. They want to, yeah. you know, show their organization what they got. I, I love, I love that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's cool. I, I mean, I, I guess I but, wouldn't mind a skills. Yeah, that crazy thing talking about the big leaguers. That there's no chance big leaguers are doing that. Like they're looking for excuses to to have the three or four days off. Let's not lie about it. I, you know what? So I the think, actual going out there and trying hard, and quite frankly, there's no money in it. Well, I mean, that's, now, what, that's hey, the this gist is, of this, it. This is my point. Boom. If you put a million or a million and a half bucks out there for I the mean, hardest I mean, is, is, is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. going to want the million? But Like, that's the thing, right? It's guys, man. You have to, like, you'd have to really sweeten the pot uh, to actually have the dudes that you really want to see out there see out there yeah, I, because of I, I how much you're offering. I will say this. If you watch the NBA All-Star game, the slam dunk competition out is dull as hell because I mean oh, they can't do anything different. They can't anymore. do anything. Yeah, different. they can't. Yeah. No one, no one is going to be able to out Jordan. He can put as many chairs yeah. or as many bodies or flaming hoops or cars out there well, you want. Flaming hoops would be cool. Nobody actually it would. It would be. But I mean, nobody's going to out Jordan. Jordan and and the thing about the home run derby is they haven't had to. You know, we're not sitting there saying, ah, it's not the same since Aaron Judge stopped taking part in it. Well, that's not true. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, I'm just not sure I like the format. Like, I don't I don't know about the, like, the hurry up and hit thing. I I know what they're doing because it's boring, and the longer you stand out there, the, the less viewership you're going to get. I get the gist the of it. We're up against the clock here, but, I, I'll, but tell you what, I'll tell you what I would do. I'll tell hard. you what I would do. They're up against the clock here. I apologize. But here's what I would do. I would try to figure out a way to have the preliminary round of the home run derby on, I would take the Sunday off, stop the season on Saturday, have the preliminary round of the home run derby on Sunday. Then I would have the final round Monday night around the futures game. So I'd prime time the futures game Mm. and in between innings, I'd have dudes because I, again, as I've told people, the futures game is a, is a ride and we're all about prospects. Everybody loves to see prospects. Yeah. I mean, you're going to tell me. We're you... begging for him. <laughs> Who's the next wave? Uh, that was fun. Hey, was that was good. Let's break and come back with Dan Schulman. He's going to join us from Seattle. It's Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590, the fan at Sportsnet. All right, welcome back to Blair and Barker for a Friday. Jays are in Seattle for a three-game series against the Mariners which means that our next guest is going to be one of the most popular men in yep. Seattle. He's Dan Shulman, mm. Blue Jays play-by-play voice, mm. joining us in, uh, from Seattle. All right, Dan, I know you must have gone downstairs for coffee or something. Breakfast, how, how did that go? How long did it take you to get back to your room? Mm-hmm. 
Well, uh, I will tell you, I can't give away state secrets. And by the way, I'm doing the best with the lighting here. I can't figure it out. I Wonderful. I shadows look, on one side. And you look sun, great. And got, All we need, is, we hear your run. voice and we know it's you. Okay. All right. Um, so the Blue Jays have moved to a different hotel. I don't know if people know this, but I know you guys know this. So mm -hmm. Buck and I stay, we travel with the team. We stay with the team. It's a, it's a different hotel. And I don't know why they switched to a different hotel, but it appears to be maybe a strategically chosen hotel where it's, it's quieter and, okay. and different. So, um, uh, first day of the series, I'm always doing a lot of work. So I'll tell you, the only time I went outside this morning was to go get a morning uh, coffee. That was like at 6.30 in the morning because when you come west, you wake up at 4.15 all of the course, time, right? Yeah. Like, there's nothing you can do about that. So uh, I went and got a coffee at 6.30. And other than that, I've kind of been uh, shut in my room for most of the time. So I haven't been out a lot. And I, I was actually planning on going to the uh, the Pike Place Market today. I really like that there. But uh, the day just kind of got away from me. So uh, to, make, to answer your short question with a long answer, I've kind of been a bit of a hermit today. So I haven't really seen anybody. Yeah, yet. Hazel's staying at the other hotel you were talking about. And she can contest, too, that there is a lot of Jays fans there. She yeah, tried to go and to I breakfast will tell you, this and I morning. I mean this in all sincerity. Yes. If Buck and Hazel and I are walking down the street <laughs> in Seattle, I'm easily the third most popular person. <laughs> here, but it's not even close. <laughs> and I'm totally fine with that. Uh, Dan, um, you know, we talked about the seeing the Yankees and the and the Astros back to back. And of course, Russ Atkins Ross Atkins did his media availability before it. Nick, the impression you kind of got is I mean, I'm going to paraphrase it here, but okay, we kind of know what's going on here, but let's kind of let this play out a little bit more. Three and five against those two teams. Did did you see anything that changed your mind about anything or, or reinforced something in your mind out of that series? I would say reinforced. I, yeah. I mean, you know, you have to squint really, really hard to see this team making the playoffs this year. You have to be extremely optimistic. You know, if they run off an eight and one road trip, let's revisit this in a week and a sure. half. But uh, I think they got as close as two games out of the third wild card, maybe like two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And we yep. know they got within one game of 500 three different times. They're nine games under 500. That's the worst they've been. And they're eight and a half out of a playoff spot. And that's the furthest out of a playoff spot they've been. So, you know, three and five on the homestand didn't get it done. Uh, the Yankees weren't playing well when they came in. No, they and they're weren't. still not playing well. No, they aren't. Um, that was, yeah, that was a series where you had to take three out of four. You know, it, you had to go five and three on that homestand, not three and five. And mm -hmm. even five and three, again, look at the standings. It's not, you know, it's still not great. So, um, you know, listen, crazier things have happened, but with each passing day, each passing loss, it looks more and more like this team is not going to be a contender and that eventually I would assume they will start trading some players. Uh, I, that probably doesn't happen until after the all-star break. And you guys know this, but for the fans who may not realize it, the draft takes up an unbelievable amount of energy mm -hmm. and resources for a major league team. And uh, the draft is happening over the all-star break. So I, 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 it wouldn't shock me to not see anything happen until after the all-star break with this team. Dan, I'm a vibe guy. I've been in a lot of locker rooms on some teams that are, have been really, really bad. And I am a vibe guy. Vibe, I think, is a big deal, right? It's the energy that you bring on an everyday basis you sound like a hockey guy now. well not really it's it's a it's a you know it is a marathon not a sprint it's sort of like hockey but it's it's monotonous like you got to get used to your partner and hanging out and <laughs> stinking together it's not the easiest thing to do I, is that the way it is with this team i know john comes out and says that every you know it's one game at a time that's the only way we're going to get back into this thing is that what your feeling when you walk through a clubhouse i hate to ask this sort of kind of question but i yeah. think it does matter with a team like this because if you don't get buy-in from everybody saying we're nine under we're this far out it is just one game at a time are you getting the same feeling that john's trying to sell us yeah, I, I, to an extent, I'll give kind of a two-part answer. First of all, I think John Schneider can't say much else than what, what he's saying. Like, sure. What else can a major manager say? Absolutely. He's not going to go, yeah, we're giving up on the season, guys. We just, like, he's just not going to say that. And I don't think he feels that. But even if he felt that, he wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he's going to say our job is to try to win a game tonight. And then our job is to try to win a game tomorrow. And, and I, I think he's saying exactly what he should be saying. In terms of the vibes, uh, you know, you've got so many younger players from Buffalo here right now. You've got like six or seven of them. So I think 
there, you know, that has altered the vibes a little bit, and it's brought a little more spirit and energy than there might otherwise be on this team. I don't think the vibes are bad. Yeah. Um, I don't think when the media walks out of the clubhouse two and a half hours before the game, they start throwing chairs at each other. <laughs> right. I, I think they like each other, and but yeah. I, I think they, you know, they all can – uh, look on, look at the standings on their phone too, and and I think they realize where they are, and 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 I don't, uh, you know, I I think they're kind of getting to that place where they realize, just like everybody does, um, what's realistic with this team this year. I think they know that in all likelihood a breakup is coming. Now that can be a little breakup where you just trade the guys whose contracts who are in the final year of their contracts, or that can be a big breakup breakup where we start talking about other guys as well. And I have no clue what they're going to do there. But if I had to guess, I would guess more on the little side than the big side that they yep. trade the guys who are in the final, final year of their contract, maybe even try to resign one or two of them. Um, but the guys who are here beyond this year are probably here next year for the most part anyways. But um, I, I think the vibes is uh, the vibes, Kevin. I, I think there's disappointment. I think they're disappointed yeah. in themselves uh, with what they with what they've done. I think they're all out there trying. I, again, I know people don't want to hear this. I can't tell you how many guys are out there every single day taking extra hitting, doing this and that. The bullpen's another story. Um, you know, what What can you do as a, uh, as a reliever other than, you know, look at what's gone wrong and try, and try to fix it and, you know, work on some stuff here and there, I guess. But they're working their tails off. It's it's just not working. They're just not playing well enough right now. And a couple of cold guys get hot, and then a couple of hot guys get cold. Um, you know, you score a lot, you but you give up a lot. You have a low scoring game, but you know you you hold them down, but you don't score. It's it's just one of those years where they're just not playing well enough and just not winning enough games. It's a good answer. You know, when you talk about vibes, the guy I think of is Teoscar Oscar Hernandez, and we <laughs> we had uh, Brett Boone on yesterday. And we were talking about the offensive woes that the Seattle Mariners are currently undergoing. And one of his points was, well, the, you know. I mean, really they, his they, only they had, point. Yeah, his only point was they <laughs> took away, you know, they took away Tay Oscar with whatever, 93 RBI, whatever, whatever it was. Um, and, you know, it's funny because I, I've kind of put my hand up and said, look, I admit that I underestimated Tay Oscar Hernandez and the impact in this team. It does seem that we have two teams that haven't been the same offensively since Teoscar's left. So, ha so have we underrated? Yeah, have we underrated? Yeah. Do you think we underappreciate? I'm going to say we underappreciated Teoscar for being the player he is, not just the vibes guy. Mm. Yeah, a, a run producer. I mean, without yeah. question, a run producer. Um, and, and again, we don't know exactly why they sure. made the trade. Right? Did, they, did they make the trade? Uh, because they wanted to improve the outfield defense, because uh, they wanted to trade the vibes, because there was too much swing and miss. I don't know. Like when you see a guy for 162 games, you see the good stuff, but you see the warts too, right? And and say Oscar Hernandez uh, was a great run producer for this team, hit prodigious home runs, drove in a lot of runs, and the vibes were 12 out of 10. I mean, there's no, in my opinion, there's there's no disputing that. We also saw, you know, some issues in the outfield and some uh, lack base of running. focus on the base, right, uh, on the bases and stuff. And, and it does feel to me like not only did they want to balance the lineup, but they wanted to maybe change the um, – the attention to detail on the team. And again, who knows? They've never mm -hmm. come out and said that, and they never will come out and say that, uh, uh, I don't think. Um, but uh, in terms of Seattle, it's interesting because the rumor was the changes they wanted to make in the offseason were to cut down on the on the number of on the number of strikeouts that they have in their right. lineup. So Teoscar not back and Eugenio Suarez not back. And they've struck out more than any team in baseball this yeah. year. Uh, you, even even with Teoscar not here, and Teoscar strikes out a lot, and yes. Eugenio Suarez is not here. So, um, listen, it, it, do do we appreciate Teoscar more now? I think so because of what the team is lacking. Um, I, those two trades, the Teoscar deal and the Guriel deal, for lack of a better term, um, and and they were done for different reasons, and they were very different. Uh, both of them in the same winter seem like jarring to me. You yes. know, you like make one, not the other, you know, again, maybe that's a partial fix, not a complete fix or, or, or something like that. And I understand what was trying to be accomplished in, in each one of them. Uh, and, and one thing I've said about the Teoscar deal, and, and I know people are going to roll their eyes at this. It was not just for Eric Swanson and Adam Mako in, in, in my opinion, it also freed up about $11 million dollars. Yep. And which they used to spend on Kevin Kiermaier. Absolutely. So in, I'm just talking about 2023. Yep. 
2023 to me, oh, that deal, in my mind, that deal was Teoscar for Eric Swanson, Adam Acko, and Kevin Kiermaier. I don't know if that reframes it. I don't know if people are going, Dan, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard you say. <laughs> no, God, it's ab absolutely, but, it's bang on. It's true. It's yeah, bang on in every level. And they used it to go get a better defensive outfielder and a left-handed bat. So, um, and I will say of the two trades, the other one was the more jarring to me, if you were to ask. So, yes. but that, but that's water under the. Yeah, bed. they just forgot yep. to replace it. Like you got to fill in the blanks. Right. If you give it up, you got to fill in the blanks. And I think they oh, forgot said, to three, fill in the blanks. Three everyday guys, essentially. That's oh, gonna be tough to. Third you know, of a lineup. If you do that, you don't fill in the blanks. This is sort of what happens. I wonder what David Schneider. You know, the Horowitz thing, jury's still out. You like it, boy. You just everything he's doing defensively, there's some unknowns there. Barger looks to me like, I, you know, you just have no idea, right? It's the overswinging thing. It's the chasing the breaking ball. I see him walk to the plate. I ain't throwing him a heater either. I'm, I'm, I'm forcing him to show me he can lay off a breaking ball that's not a strike. But the David Schneider thing, this is a big enough sample size that I, we may be starting to find out, Dan, what he is. Is he hurting his chances going forward as being a consistent player at the big league level? I think it could go either way at this point. And you're right. I looked at it a couple of days ago. I was just looking at who's had the most at-bats on this team this year. And I, I might be wrong, but I think he's fourth on this team this year. He's actually played a lot. And he's played a lot because at the beginning of the year, he forced his way into the lineup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think it's a, it's a good point. And uh, – you know, the funny or the ironic part, not the funny part, the ironic part is his good buddy Spencer Horowitz is a part of this. Like Spencer mm -hmm. is kind of taking away one of the two spots where Davis Schneider can play. Mm -hmm. But again, if he hits well enough, he'll play left field or they'll DH him. You know, there's going to come a time on uh, if this team doesn't contend, that DH spot's going to be a lot more open than it is right now because yeah. Justin Turner's a guy they will move to a contender. So I was selfishly, personally, I was really glad to see Davis Schneider have two hard hit line drive base hits yesterday he's been scuffling he has and he's um you know kevin and i'm and as i always say I, I defer to you on this i mean he's at that stage probably now in the big leagues where people know who he is like yeah. he got on the scouting report pretty quickly and now they know what they're trying to do with him and maybe horwitz will get there too although there's such different kinds of hitters i think spencer horwitz is maybe more immune to the ups and downs because of the kind of things that he has in his swing. Um, I, I don't know that Davis is ever going to be a 270, 280 hitter, mm -hmm. but if he can hit 27 bombs in a season, mm -hmm. they need that and they'll take that. And he can walk too, which is good. But he's definitely at a point now where they've made adjustments to him and now he's got to make the adjustment back. And he's one of those guys who was out there early every single day. Um, you know, they're pounding him with a lot of high fastballs. And, yeah. and, you know, as he freely admits, he's got a hole up in the zone with fastballs, like a lot of guys do, and then hard sliders away. Like, they're not reinventing the wheel against him, right? They're just making the pitches they know they need to make. Like, to me, the craziest pitch of the whole year was Josh Hader throwing him a breaking ball in Houston in the first week of the season. Yeah. Yeah. David is hitting it, Davis hitting it out to left center. Um, you, you know, uh, the other teams have video, too, and, yeah. and cactus, too. As there we like. you go. And, so, I, um, but I'm pulling hard for him. Me it's too. Awesome, I, you guys know, and I, and I hope they give him a lot. Dan, of I was just wondering because yeah. I, I went through a checklist. You know, there's only so many changes you can make, and once you get to that point, like sort of he is now, where they basically, you know, he's standing straight up and down. He's not leg kicking. Like he's going through everything he can possibly go through. I just wonder, sort of, once you do it, you see it play out. It's not working. Now what? That's where I think we're sort of at with Davis. So it's yeah, in, it's but, but I think that if the second half of the year they're a non-contending team, I think they owe it to themselves to throw Why all not? these 20, 25, 26-year-olds out there yeah. every single game and, and see what they have. Know what you have and know what you don't so you can figure out what you need in the offseason. So I'm hoping he gets a lot Me of Me too, absolutely. Danny, we're going to let you run, man. Thanks so much Thanks, for uh, doing this. Enjoy Seattle. Mm -hmm. When you're down at Pike Place Market, Poroshki, Poroshki, have you ever That's gone? That's my place. Is that your place? That's oh, my, my place. Oh, my God. Really? Oh. <laughs> well, you know, let's, just, love, let's keep it between us. Uh, let's keep it between us because my yeah, wife I and I were there. there and say, Jeff Blair sent me. What will they say? And they'll have no idea. But <laughs> it was a place that my wife discovered when we made a trip down there, actually. And for like four years of road trips, yeah. that was my place. But nobody. My two, jo yeah. my nope. two jobs are go to Poroshki, Poroshki, and be Hazel's bodyguard. bodyguard uh, all there the you good go. luck with number two. Good there luck. Go. Thanks, yeah. Danny. Yeah. <laughs> Travel we'll safely. Be Thanks, well. Buddy. Enjoy yourself. See ya. Thank you. See you guys. Yeah. There you go. Poroski Poroski is just it's a it's a Polish bakery. Yeah. 
and I don't know how to describe it to people, but it is, I just, I, it's the best, maybe the best baked goods I've had outside of Paris. I mean, it is just unreal. Yeah. Sounds like a great time. I mean, I look, that's, I talk to my wife all the time and she says, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, you got, you know, you, it's walking around and, you know, because of who she is and she's popular. And I said, yeah, you know, you got to embrace it. Say hi, take pictures, have a good time with it. And well, Hazel being you, Hazel, she does exactly that. So. so if you're listening to us or you're listening on the podcast and you're going to be in Seattle this weekend, um, I mean, maybe we gave it away. I don't want to give away the where you might find Dan and Hazel. But anyhow, if you're down there, Pike Place Market, go to Poroski Poroski. They, yeah, I think all don't the tell J- them we sent you because they have no idea. Who Most are, of the Jays but. fans know where the Blue Jays are staying anyway. Yeah. Maybe not Hotel Two, but the first one they do for sure. Yeah, because that's where all the teams stay. Yeah. Anyhow, Proshki Proshki. There you go. Maybe they'll send us. I mean, they do. They do send deliver. Who? They, they could send us food Monday. They deliver to Toronto. Oh yeah, they'll stick it on a. They're one of those places that'll stick it on a plane and well, fly it up. Well, I mean, you you are a high roller, so. You don't have to be a high roller. Get I just up. noticed that, uh, yeah, they've got the berry. They still have the berry bedazzle piroshki and the chocolate cream hazelnut roll. So they still got all their – I'm going to go off the website right now. 416-413 because I'm getting hungry. 416-413-3959 is the back leg line. We will go to that at 530. So get your fingers, your dial – well, no one dials anymore. Get your button-pushing fingers – Ready and leave a text or leave a voice note for Kevin and myself, 416-413-3959. We will go to the back leg line at 530, but when uh, oh, we still got some time left, I almost got out of there early. I got so excited. Well, you're like all over the place here. Well, I got excited. Well, you're, you're like, I mean, it takes a little food talk. Like, yeah. Clean, clean it's it up. Friday, like, man. Uh, you it's know. Friday. I mean. Friday. Food, cigars. I you, mean, are yeah, the, you, know. you are the, where's that cigar thing? I, I remember that. I remember that cigar you gave me. <laughs> Man. I mean, I'm trying to educate you in cigars. <laughs> I got uh, Parker these nice Italian cigars. Uh, debatable. Gerbaldi's. They're really good. But Parker said, "Man, I'm a man. I don't want a thin cigar." I told you they're a, <laughs> you know, uh, they're, they they uh, you make a statement when you do you? When you smoke one. Yeah, them. yeah, you do. Well, that's a statement. Yeah, you do. Uh. That was interesting hearing Dan um, talk about Davis Schneider and kind of where we are with him. Yeah. And, and and I'm I'm with I'm with him and I'm with you. Look, I want I want Davis Schneider. I want him to be a good story. Mm-hmm. Like, I want him to bounce back a little bit and be a good story because I still think next year you could do worse than have Davis Schneider and Spencer Horowitz as your combination. Yeah, I don't think you could have all of you can't have the you can't have Barger Clement. Well, I uh, think like Horowitz I, tonight. Like you I can't think have we're all. We're seeing. Of them. I think. <laughs> I think we're kind of getting a sense of Addison Barger, and you know I think Addison Barger probably needs back down to AAA. Uh, Ernie Clement. Yeah, I mean, I, Barger, Ernie Clement is not going to be an everyday player Barger for you. I want Ernie a, Clement coming off the bench. Barger, is what I want. Barger's been in, in the minor leagues long enough. Like he is either a big league or he's not. Like I, you know, he's a he's a straight up and down stand guy, which is very hard to do. Eyes are very far away from the, the strikes. On yeah. like there's a you take big daddy hacks like that, you got big giant swing. You start swing from way back here, which is behind. Let your me mar- ask you this: rah, instead of short and quick to the ball, if you're not short and quick, they see that they start spinning right. it. And let me ask you this: I mean, we've we've talked to him. We know about the leg kick, the Ichiro, and all that stuff. It's a lot. Could you? Do you think he could? With adjustments and changes, he could be a major league hitter. Uh, Quickly. No. All right. <laughs> Quickly. Love I mean, what, what, what's what's the matter with you? 416 413. I'm going to go get a Well, I'm going to break it down Pursky. for you, but quickly. 416 413 3959 is the back leg line. John Schneider's manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll see if he goes to Poroski Poroski. No one, John, he might. It's Blair and Barker. I got some Sportsnet, wins in five, it. Probably the fan in Sportsnet. All right, welcome back to Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590 fan. 416-413-3959 is a back leg line. So we await uh, John Schneider. I, I threw you under the bus with the, uh, with the Addison Barger. Well, I'm, I'm going to apologize. So we look at Addison Barger's swing. 
what has to change, do you think, for that Swing's to be? Swing's big. He chases a lot. Like, you got to, you know, what you don't swing at is the biggest thing at the big league level, especially nowadays because elevated fastball and how much they spin it, not in fastball counts. There's no fastball count anymore. Okay. 3 is not a fastball count. We see change-ups all the time in 3-0 counts. So. All right. I just wanted to make sure that because I dropped Skid that on you. With on like, time I, with and think like, left center. With like 10 seconds left. Sure I you did. I'm used to that. I'm sorry. Yeah. But, and you know me. I don't want to. Uh, I don't like doing that. I don't like throwing people under the bus. No? No. Oh. Uh, the Jays are in Seattle for the first mm. of a three-game series tonight. It is Toronto South or Toronto Southwest or Toronto West, however you want to describe it. John Schneider is manager of the Toronto there Blue Jays. There he is joining us on Zoom. He is. What's up, guys? Hey, we're, buddy. We're doing well. We're doing well. Uh, safe in his office in Seattle. Mm. Uh, you were able to get around the crowds. We were just talking to yeah. Shulman about that. I understand you guys strategically may have changed hotels, hey? Hmm? Uh, yeah, it was a little busy last year. Um, nice new place here in, uh, in downtown. And yeah. uh, there, was, there was a few people actually waiting for us at the airport. So uh, Jay's fans, are, they're traveling here. Um, but, yeah, we're going to keep our location a little bit quiet, I think. There John, you how, about young, how about young guys coming to see this for the first time and, you know, going through this with the big giant crowds and the, and the, being on the road? Can that hurt, help, well, you know, uh, any advice you're going to give any of the younger guys going through this for the first time? I don't think so. I, I think if anything, it helps, you know, getting a little bit of, you know, energy on the road and atmosphere. Um, they're looking forward to it. I think there's enough guys that have kind of been through it here. Starts are MVP. You know, they open the gates and everyone comes running in, which is pretty cool. Um, but I think, I think it, can only, it can only help those young guys getting out there and kind of feeling the sport. Hey, before we get to the team, I just want to ask you a question. I don't, I, I don't ask you enough and i know kevin does but i don't ask you this enough how are you holding up yeah great question just how you hold no man i'm yeah. serious how, how i mean you've got a couple of young kids i mean how are you holding up yeah i'm good man thank you for asking you know it's again it's 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 been a disappointing season it's been not where we wanted to be by any means you know at this at this stage of it um but yeah i'm, I'm holding up man baseball Baseball is, you know, the biggest part of my life other than my family, you know, and, and you get to you get to come and you get to do this uh, every single day with guys that you really like being around, whether it's players or staff, you know. So um, I'm good. Fam's good. You know, they still enjoy coming to the games. They still enjoy watching them, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it's it's one day at a time right now. Mm -hmm. That sounds easy to say, but it's, um, you know, you got to you got to look at everything, not just, you know, an, an inning, a pitch, a win, a loss. Um, we're trying to accomplish a lot right now. We're trying to do it quickly. Um, and the one thing I'm always going to be is positive. It starts with the guy on the mound with Kevin tonight. Is there something early on, especially with his fastball? Cause that's been, you know, been getting hit around a little bit. Is there something that you're going to be looking for that will tell you that he's going to have a good night with the hater? Yeah. It's just located in, the, in his lanes up and down. You know, I think when the velo is there, velo has been there. I think we're kind of past that early in the year. It was kind of up and down and sporadic a little bit, but when he's locating it up and down, um, he's really good. You know, I think that he's been uncharacteristic of him this season. He's pretty. He's been pretty pinpoint over the course of his career the last couple of years with that fastball, and then it makes his split so good. So when he's locating it up and down, he's going to be pretty good, and it just makes that split um, that much tougher. So that's that's exactly what me and Peter are looking for. We look, you know, in between his starts, that's what they were working on. Um, so you'll know right away with Kev. Now, we saw Spencer Horowitz yesterday. I, I don't know if I'd say pushed into action, but he, he got he got to face some pretty good left-handed pitching. What is it, and was quite successful. Uh, what is it about his swing? Is, is there something about his swing or his approach that you think might allow him to avoid, and I'm not trying to put you in the spot here, but might allow him to become an everyday guy and, and maybe not a platoon guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, for sure. I, I think he's he's done that in the minors. He faced mm -hmm. lefties in the and fared well against them. And his, I, lo I love his approach. You know, he, he game plans for a younger hitter, um, you know, not afraid to really dive into how a pitcher is going to try to attack him and stick with it. And then being able to make adjustments off of what he sees, you know, he doesn't try to do too much. Um, I've always said, if you control the zone, you're going to have a good chance to be pretty successful. And he does a really good job of that. And he doesn't try to get too big. You know, he uses the entire field yesterday with a couple opposite field knocks, one up the middle, um, knows when to be aggressive. You know, yesterday, base is loaded. He swings the first pitch. Other times, he's he's working the count and controlling the zone. So I think you put a, a pretty simple swing in with a really good approach, and you kind of get what you're seeing right now with him. So it's uh, 
it's been cool to watch. John, is that sort of what David Schneider's going through a little bit? When you were mentioning the sort of slowing it down, trying to take what the pitcher gives you, not taking the big daddy hack, you know, I think that's sort of the graduation part of this, right, is when the league figures you out, they know you have a little bit of a weakness, they attack that, it's up to you to combat it, and that sort of shortening up, trying to take what he gives you, not overswinging. I, I think the question is, that's where Davis is at. Is he capable in your mind of doing just that? Sort of, if he throws me away, it's down. I'm going to take that little base hit to, to right center. Do you see that in him? Yeah, that's kind of where he's where he's headed towards, I think. You know, what he's, what he's been working on uh, quite a bit. And, you know, a guy like him, you know, he's going to, when he's controlling his own, he's, he's good. You know, I think last year when he was so good, you know, the walks were there with the home runs and the power and all that kind of stuff. Um, again, he's not trying to go the other way. You know, I think that kind of comes based off of where pitch location is. But, I, yeah, it's been pretty – last year was fastballs up. He kind of, you know, made some changes to conquer that or to get better at that. And he's seen a lot of pitches that are going away from him. You know, a lot of breaking balls away from him or sinkers that are going back door, ball to strike. You know, so I think that's where he's at right now. Um, kind of figuring out what the league is adjusting or how the league is adjusting to him. And um, he's got to just stick with it. You know, the, the key with Schneid, it sounds really simple, is when you see him walking, he's he's in a good spot, you know. So um, hopefully he can kind of continue to to keep going in the right direction. But the walks the walks are big. You know, there's some swing and miss. He's going to strike out. But when he's walking and and hitting the ball hard, he's in a good spot. Uh, where's Bo at? Do you think he's close? I know you're an optimistic guy, and, you know, that's who you are, and that's why we love you. Is is Bo, you know, we're getting that 300 at bat mark, right? This is where Bo should be figuring out what he's doing wrong and starting to give you that at bat that we all want Bo to give you. Are you seeing something that you are feeling confident that this is Bo and he's about to take off? Yeah, I mean, I'm always, I'm always confident with him in the batter's box, you know, always confident with a bat in his hand, you know, so – I think the game uh, two games ago, um, you know, the sack fly to center, the double to left, you know, there's, it's been a weird year for Bo, you know, it's been, it's been very, very, you know, unlike him at this, at this stage in the season. And he knows that and he feels that. Um, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm always going to be confident in the hitter that he is and the hitter that he has been, you know, I, I've seen him do it for so many years. So hopefully it's just a matter of time. You get him going, Vlad going, George going, JT going, you know, and, and on down the line you go, you know, you get more than just one or two guys doing it at the same time. You know, that's that's been the missing link in our offense this year. So, um, again, all the confidence in the world in him. Um, he's, he's he's missing pitches that for the last five years he's he's hammered. John, it's a lot to ask moving around the order. I mean, I, look, I, I played with you. I've been around. I played a bazillion years. I moved from the three hole to the four hole just mindset wise was tough putting him in the leadoff spot for a little while and then putting him in the cleanup spot can't be the easiest thing. Has that been tough on yeah. him? Is he getting through that well enough that you won't see a different kind of at bat? Yeah, I, I think Bo's at bats will be the same no matter where he is, really. You know, and leading off with something he was comfortable doing. Um, so, you know, threw him up there for a, a period of time. But to me, he's he's the best when he's hitting with guys on base. You know, the numbers back that up. His, his career stats back that up. You know, so... It, I agree with you. It, it, it's not ideal to be moving guys around. You know, that's kind of just where we're at right now. George back at the top, that's that's staying. You know, I think that he's in a good spot. And, you know, within that, you want him and Vlad and, and Bo and JT to be around the top of, of the four guys in there. So it is tough on players. We do talk about it. We joke about it at times. Um, but I think with Bo, it doesn't matter where he's hidden. You know, his, his at-bats are going to be the same. Yeah, I got to ask. I've been wanting to ask you this all year and nicely. Why is it taking George so long to be able to pull velocity in the air the way he is now? That's the big question. Now it's just free and easy and not overthinking it. Why is it taking him so long? I think he was just waiting for you and Jeff to keep yelling at him and talking about him and said, all right, enough's enough. We'll take you know? credit. Yeah. So a lot of it is you guys, but <laughs> you know, I think George, I mean, Georgie, no secret, right? He's getting older. You know? Yeah. He's making some, he's making some adjustments. You've probably noticed where his hands are starting now, you know, a little bit more upright as opposed to a little bit more back here. It's just a dude making adjustments as he's getting a little bit older. You know, I think the new setup kind of has him, like you said, a lot more free and easy on those pitches mm -hmm. and doing mm -hmm. what he has done his whole career on those pitches. You know, sometimes it takes a little time to, to feel it, um, to work through it. For one, to say, okay, 
I need to change something. I've been successful my whole life at this. And then so to, to be able to change it, it takes a little bit of time to to get to where you're comfortable with it. And I think that's kind of just where he's at, you know. So um, it's a credit to him, you know, not being stubborn and, <laughs> you know, saying, OK, I'm going to do something a little bit different. And it's obviously been been really, really good for him. Uh, sorry, Jeff. I, I hate to keep jumping in here. Hey, on I'll Jeff. just go it, and get a drink. No, no. It, John, the last one before I let Jeff jump in here. Hey, is I that, can go day drink right that, now is, while you're doing this. Well, we've done it. Is that hard to do, like talk a veteran into – basically dude this ain't working like you you know here's the numbers like is that a hard conversation for you whoever's having it i i have no idea who had it with him but i'm sure somebody because it's changed yeah. hey, was that a tough is that a tough conversation to have with a veteran guy yeah i mean yes and no you know what i mean i i think that you know when you've been doing something your whole life and you've had really good success with it you know you want to you want to kind of continue to do that right so I mean, it's the same as a pitcher learning a new pitch. You know, if it's Burrios mm -hmm. with a cutter or Ev with a sinker or something like that, it, it's similar where you, you try to evolve with the game a little bit. Um, but from a hitting standpoint, it, it takes it, it takes some courage to do what Georgia did, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's, okay, we're two months into a season. I'm grinding. I'm going to change something, and I'm going to hope that it works. Because if it doesn't, I, I'm going to look back and say, why the hell did I change it? I've been good for so long, and now I've just wasted another 100 of bats. So... I give him all the credit in the world for doing it, him and the hitting guys. Um, and I think it's a credit to him for being open to say, okay, let's let's try something a little bit different because this doesn't this doesn't feel like my normal self. I appreciate you answering it that way because I, I don't think people quite understand that part of it, that how hard it is. And man yes. alive, I can't believe I've just wasted a hundred at bats. This come some dude told me to change this and now it ain't working and now I have no idea what I'm doing. So I appreciate sure, you yeah. answering it that way. Yeah, of course. And it's a delicate balance, right? It's, it's, you know, it's nice to have guys that have played and, and, you know, been through it and understand how tough that is. You know, it's, it, again, this game is not just a magic formula to say, okay, this will make you better. You know, you got to feel through it. You got to work through it. You got to trust people that you're working with, trust people you're talking to, whether it's a teammate or whether it's coach, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, uh, I wish it happened quicker, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like, like so many things, like, you know, like fans want, like I want, like you guys want. You know, sometimes it takes time, and and we're we're working our asses off for it to to get better. Awesome. I have no idea why, uh, but Bar and Barker always gets on me about this. But every time I watch Hennessy Cabrera pitch, I come away thinking, man, I like, I really like him. Uh, you know, I like the demeanor on the mound. Uh, the whole thing about him. Where do you ultimately see Hennessy's Cabrera, John? Is I mean, what is? I'm not. I don't want to say what the ceiling is for him. Um, and he's already right now. I mean, you, you know, you're in a position where if anybody can pitch, and you're giving them a responsible <laughs> role. <laughs> to be honest, but well, I mean, I'm being nice. That's true. True. That's true. true. I'm, I'm not lying. I am yeah. not lying. But what is he, John? I mean, to me, he can be. A, he can be. You know, he used to be a starter. He wants to he yeah. wants to throw all the, you know, he wants to pitch. And I think he is very useful to, you know, go through five, six hitters in a lineup. Um, I think how he handles righties and lefties is really, really unique. And he's got great stuff. You know, his heater's at 96, 97 when it's on. Mm -hmm. And he's got a curveball, a cutter, and a changeup. You know, so it's a... It's a unique skill set for sure. Um, I love his demeanor. He's a, he's a, he's, I don't want to say a little bit intense. He's very intense. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and wants to be out there in big spots, you know? So like you said, he's kind of climbing up the ladder a little bit in terms of who's going to be out there when, and, you know, I think his ceiling could be a really, really good multi-inning reliever, um, whether it's in the middle of the game or later in the game, he's mm -hmm. got, he's always had a really good arm. And when he's in the zone, he's, he's been pretty damn good. Yeah. Just don't apologize when you hit a home run hitter in the fanny. Like it's okay. Like Barker you got to throw like him that. in there. Don't say, I'm sorry. Say I mean, it was fine. a little odd. Cause yeah. he strikes me as a type of guy who could get a He could get the, I just strikes me as the type of guy who could get the ass to you be honest. You got to go in there. Like the dude's yeah, back well, legging you. Like, you see, yeah, exactly. You see Jordan's hitting missiles all over the rock. Yeah. Center, so it's like we're, yeah, we're trying to get in on him, whether it was Chris or, or Cabrera, you know what I mean? You can't let him get those arms out, you know? So that was the discussion we had with the pitchers. You know, I, I kind of talked with Cabby about it afterwards. He's like, I'm not letting him get his, his arms out. So, I mean, 
Mm -hmm. I loved it. You know what I mean? And I've seen him kind of have the opposite reaction when something like that does happen, too. So I was glad it, it stopped where it did. Right. Okay, last one. Nate Pearson, two seamer. Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you never want to see it again? I uh, love it. You know, just quickly. I mean, Nate, man, I mean, he's got such a good arm. We've seen this for years, right? We've seen this for years with the fastball slider, curveball. He can throw a split. Um, I think it's just he's an imposing figure out there. He's a big guy, and he's got 100 in the tank. And then when you're – we've been trying to figure out ways to get him um, – what's the right word? To have a little bit more of a presence inside on right-handed hitters. You know, mm -hmm. so they're not just sitting out there uh, with the fastball and with the slider. You know what I mean? As hard as he throws, it's still, you know, as a righty, you can kind of hang out there with him a little bit. So it's a pitch that he threw as a starter. Um, again, this is this goes back to Pete saying, hey, why don't you give this a go? We've tried a lot of things with Nate. Um, but when you get 100 coming in at you and then and then you got to protect against a 88, yeah. 89 mile out slider, that's, that we're talking, that's a different story. So I like it a lot. Um, again, he's not going to turn into a sinker slider guy by any means, but to have that pitch to say, okay, I'm here and, and I can get on this side of the plate is going to be a big for him. Awesome. John, we're going to let yeah. you run, man. Uh, good luck in this series. Go get him. Yeah, we appreciate you, buddy. Safe travels. Thanks a lot, well, man. Guys. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Always good catching up. Yeah, see you, Take man. Take care. John Schneider, manager of the Toronto Blue. Look, you can love John or hate John. I, Again, how many how many managers you know will get be that insightful when it just comes to like the Springer thing? Like I mean, what? I, that's why I ask about the change and a veteran guy trying to make a change because basically what it is is. But see, didn't I now? Okay, like didn't I kind of say that earlier this year when we were uh, talking? Uh, about, yeah, if you yeah, did, yeah, I wasn't yeah. listening. When, I'm not the way John did. <laughs> no, but we're talking about George Springer, and my point was. It's got to be frustrating for a guy with that track record to just to have to to just accept that he's yeah. he's older. Yeah, I just don't think that's I, I think it, that's a thing. I don't think it's that. I don't think it's just anything bad about the guy. I think a lot of players are like. Uh, that. Yeah, I think it's about the organization figuring out when you want to punt your organization, right? Go a different direction. This is sort of the same exact thing as a coaching staff. When do I, you go to a guy that's I'll buy that. you're, you're, I'll buy you're that. paying the highest amount of money to and you're expecting just to hit balls to the moon and he looks like Kevin Barker? Like, when's the right time to do it? And that's John, right? Yeah. John even <clears throat> said there that he would have loved to have seen us do it sooner, but it's basically that how do you have the conversation? Not, Is it when you're getting easy, drunk man. on the plane and you basically go, look, dude, you ain't hitting good. Let's mix it up. How do you do it? Now all of a sudden he's doing and it's gravity taking over and it's barrel dropping on ball. And yeah. now you're seeing him free yeah. and easy getting to velocity, which he's came out loud and said, I don't like velocity. But now you're hammering it. So I think sometimes I mean, we, good for sometimes them. we do we forget they're human beings. Well, no, sometimes we, do. And we forget that they're dudes are proud. Like I I yeah, I don't know George Springer that. I'm not personal friends with him, but um I'm sure he looks at what he's making, looks at his track record, knows where the team is. Uh, and, yeah, I, it's just not everybody's wired the same way. Man. No. <clears throat> and, um, mm. you know, it, it it's – like there's a lot that – I, I think – there's a lot that's gone on with this team this year that we don't know about, frankly. I don't know if we're ever going to know about. I think there's a ton of stuff that's gone on with. This well, team. I think I th I think the the or I think the coaching staff in the offseason knew that that the lineup needed help. That's what I think. That's that's a fair. And point. I, and I, th I think you're trying to mold this thing into what you were trying to mold it into. And sometimes because of board guys are uh, out in their career, it's just uh, impossible to no, do I, that. <clears throat> pardon me. I know you're a lefty hitter. Yeah. <clears throat> pardon me, but uh, before we break develop a little bit about Nate and the two-seamer and John explaining about wanting to have a pitch to throw and ex explain that. But yeah, I think I think it's a little I, more. This is what I think. <laughs> I think his heater getting hammered. It's getting... Four seamers getting hammered. That's his heater. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, hammered. When it's getting hammered, Pete Walker gonna walk up to you and go, hey, it's getting hammered. If I'm going to have to bring you in and say the eighth inning to the meat of the order and two of those three are right-handed, I need you to get after somebody. Get them off your slider because mm -hmm. you seem to be in love with it. So Even though you're a, you throw three digits. Will get them. I, if he throws it enough, you got to be convicted in throwing it. Like, is he going to throw? If he throws it and they take it and it's balls all the time, it's, all right. it's useless. Yeah. 
So he's going to have to be able to control it, get some called strikes on it, be unpredictable with it. If he can do all of those things, and let's raise our hand and, and ask yourself, any Nate Pearson you've seen is capable of doing that? Um, there's your answer. So, I mean, I, I John, again, John is very good at not bus throwing people, yep. but he's basically saying exactly what I just said, that the heater's getting hammered. He loved the slider. You want to throw the slider? Something's got to get him off the slider. Or not, I'm going to dive out over the plate, and mm -hmm. I'm going to hammer that hanger, which is sort of what happens, right? And they lead baseball in their pen and giving up homers, and he's one of them, right? He'll give them up on balls that are hanging, spinning because he gets married to that thing. It's just one of them things. But he's got to use it the right way. He's basically got to pitch with it. And he ain't a lot of the times a pitcher. He's a thrower. It's not the easiest thing to do. So I'm in the camp. I'll believe it when I see it. 416-413-3959. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that rude? 3959. No, that's the back leg line. 416-413-3959. Wow. Well, I'm not Which rude on the back leg line. I'm nice. You're nice. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, um, no, you save your rudeness for me when we're off the air. Uh, that is the back leg line, your chance to leave questions or comments for us. Ooh. And it is Friday, and uh, we like to go to the back leg line. Now, because the Jays are on the West Coast and because I need my sleep, um, we're not going to be doing a lot of Blue Jays talk. Are you uh, sad about that? We're doing it on Thursday. I mean, I like talking to the people. So if you want to talk to us, this is a chance to do it. 416-413-3959. And because we're not doing MA, we may do it a little bit uh during the week as well. Absolutely. Look, this is a nine-game series. They're on the road. It's going to lead up to the All-Star break. Basically, do or die for them. Right here it is. That's been, it's, it, it's, do this or, is do it. Do or die was done. You, I mean, you go you go, uh, you go, go four and five, you go three and six, uh, you can back the truck up. This this is it. Like, you go you go seven and two, you go eight and one. I'm not saying that's happening, mm -hmm. but that if you do it. Uh, four and six, four and three, three, nine, five. There it is. Back leg line. I'm going to take a commercial. <laughs> How about that? Do it. Come back. It's Blair and Barker on Sportsnet 590, the fan at Sportsnet. Barker was a little worried there. Thought I was getting my wires crossed, literally. Remember my first time coming on? <clears throat> I got, you know what? You're giving me your gunk. You think so? The, <laughs> What's that? Let me rephrase that. <laughs> You're giving me Watch your, your mouth, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'm getting your coffin stuck. Oh, way. Look, I've 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 have blown. Any tests? No. Have any of those spare tests? Absolutely, on? I got a bazillion. I never use them, but <coughs> Dude, I'll, I'll kill you if I'm getting this stuff. Huh. You better bring it. That's all I can tell you. Because you know me, I never get sick. Never. Never had a cavity. Never. Diseases get sick. are immune to your body. <laughs> they are. They're, they know when to stay away. <laughs> yeah. Four one six four one three three nine five is the back leg line. No, they just go, that dude's too old. Let's yeah, go in and get somebody look else. Right through him. 416 413 line. Every Friday, you know what's happened at the show. Every Friday we like to tap into the back leg line and 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 hear what Vox Populi has to say. Wow. Check that on your phone, Vox Populi. I'll look that up. Some big Kelsey words. in Toronto left us a voicemail, got us started. Just wondering what your thoughts on last year, the Yankees' horrible season, you know, didn't make the postseason. Um, they brought in a third party to assess their front office and their hitting coaches and pitching coaches and top to bottom, and they kind of cleared out a bunch. Uh, do you think the Jays have the wherewithal to do that? Um, is it the hitting coaches? Is it the pitching coaches? I mean, I know Pete Walker is supposed to be amazing. I, I just, I'm wondering what's going on. Um, if you think they would do that, push for it. <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Bye. So, Kelsey, let me get this straight. You want to bring in khakis to look at the khakis. Yeah, it's been done. No, actually, I, I mean, I was just Or waiting. you bring in Juan Soto. Uh, I was waiting. Do, do I think they would? I Listen, I'll tell you the truth. <clears throat> um, the Yankees aren't the first organization to do it. Uh, and, I mean, you know, what made the difference this year? That or adding Juan Soto, um, I don't know because that, honest to God, that's a decision that I would think would have to be made. Yeah, uh, you know, 
we're 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 just not behind the scenes enough to know what's going no. on, how the conversation, what what Do, that's now, like, and how I, much information they give, and all. No, that but stuff. Kelsey, I, I will say this <clears throat> because this, a fair this, point, this is though. something. Oh, it's a fair point. It and is. here's the thing. And one of the reasons Brian Cashman did this because Brian Cashman has been in that organization forever. I mean, the current, you know, Ross and Mark have been here since 2015. Mark here, 20, 2016, Ross got here, I think. End of 15. Right. Yeah. So, and this organization, I mean, this is their organization top to bottom. All the scouting people, player development people. Yeah, there have been some, some holdovers. But by and large, this organization is very much built on the foundation they created. So... And that includes James Click has been here. As, you know, everybody thinks James Click should take over as general manager. I mean, I think he's, his title is vice president of baseball strategy. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, this, it's not, I'm not even going to call it an easy fix. It's not an easy change to make. There is a lot, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of depth. Right, there are a yeah. lot of roots to this thing right now, yeah. and um, I, you know, do I generally? I don't like consultants, for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Would I? Is it? Is it out of the question? I don't know who would make that call. Um, I, I did. You know, the, the Yankees. Their explanation for it was pretty straightforward, and I would be lying if I said that I've read that it's made a huge difference. You know, it would very much be in keeping with the way things are done in society in general right now to, I mean, to hire a consultant. Everybody's a consultant. I've consulted in things, not baseball teams, but everybody's a consultant. You start trading away the guts of this thing, everything's on the table. Everything. That's me. Yeah. I, I, Offensive, I guess offensively, they got the, 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 offensively they need to the, make some corrections. Whatever that is, yeah, the they can't figure that out. That the part of it, the yeah, complicating absolutely. factor. The complicating factor is the Yankees knew that they weren't going to trade Aaron Judge, get rid of Anthony Volpe, get rid of Garrett Cole. They they kind of knew what they had on the field. So the question is, all right, yeah, let's figure out what's going on around there. Now, can the Blue Jays? I don't think they know what they're going to have in the field next year. So I, I, I know it's a long-winded answer. Yeah, I think the but, but I think you know what you know what I'm yeah. getting at here. The where the Yankees are now, or I'm sorry, where the Blue Jays are now compared to where the Yankees were is vast is vastly different. But mm. the similarity, the similarity is that you have ownership that has spent a lot of money. Yeah, and you have ownership that I think has every right at some point to say what happened yeah i think it's i think it's talent executing what you, they're given on an everyday basis that, that's that's what it comes down that, to that, right? kelsey that's that's a tremendous question that, and that i say you start question. you start trading away guts it's it's time like you know, everything's on the table and i think the pete walker thing the you you, you got to have talent like uh, who's yeah, john, john who's john giving the ball to well, and, and, and you know your fight your your fifth starter and like we there's, also there's don't a, know we don't uh, i'm just going to say we don't know what the Different people have different contractual arrangements with this team, but we don't know. I mean, there's a big enough sample size with Petey that, yeah, he's molding something into something. Yeah, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I, and, and I don't. I, if it's me, I would be surprised because, you know, look, we get accused of being too pro Pete Walker, but I do know this. Sorry, and I know this from talking. No, I, I haven't. I can't say that I've spoken to an agent about Pete Walker in the last two years. I haven't, but I did have a chance to talk to an agent a couple of years ago. And I had him say that Pete Walker is a selling point. Mm. And he said, and, and I kind of looked at him, he said, Robbie Ray. Pete Walker made Robbie Ray a crap ton of money. Marcus Stroman. So there's, there's, you could go down the list. There, there, there's nothing wrong with, with, with having a pitching coach that's made pitchers that's made pitchers a lot of money. Mm. And mm. Jack and Soros Manitoba. Love Soros Manitoba. 
I would like to know the difference between triple A and double A. Oh, good question. If you're a hot shot in double A, why aren't you in triple A? If you're really good in triple A, why aren't you in the majors? Oh, this is a great Thank question. Thank you. Love your show. Hope you're on all winter. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Yeah, I mean, I... All yeah, I, I think it's about opportunity. That that's me. I mean, they, they've said this a bazillion times. Why, why don't you call Horowitz? Well, you got to somebody's got to lose their job for this guy to get a job. Like I think that's what. No, this, but I think okay. But this but comes down to Jack's point is the difference in talent. I think at Double A AA and Triple A. Um, I would I, think experience is one of them. That was the biggest thing when I went from double A AA to triple A. It was experience. Now I'm facing a couple of older guys on the pitching staff who have been in the big leagues, who've been around long enough to not throw me an OO fastball, not to throw me something in a count that I think I should be getting. And because he's been around long enough to understand that, that I think is the difference. Now, again, it's totally different now. Triple A is so far away from the big leagues now when it comes to talent and especially, experience. We talked oh, especially Buck pitching. Martinez talks about this pitching. all the time yeah. about you know just just the talent and we've seen it when it comes yeah. up to the big leagues for the Blue Jays and it was good in Triple A and it ain't even close to being a big leaguer like we've seen that so yeah I think that's the difference between Double A AA and Triple A's experience Triple A to the big leagues right now I just I think they they that's sort of where they're putting all of their their money into the big time coaches is in triple a to sort of see i i, I that's mean, what i think I, I think it's more of like you you you're like knocking on the door you're right there like most of the 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 prospects for the blue jays are triple a no yeah but a lot of teams look at the orioles they bring guys up from double a a lot of teams now will bring people will bring uh, will bring players up from double a because there's such an emphasis on and I think you got to have no brain on right? young on on getting youthful players up there, but also in the minor league systems of uh, systems are changed now because there's fewer minor league teams because baseball yeah. baseball killed a bunch of minor league teams. So I I mean my understanding from people is that the level of play at Double A is way better. Better you're you're seeing harder throwers. Mm. You're seeing the elite prospects at Double A. Triple A is kind of a place where one. You stop off very quickly before you go to the majors, or two, you get sent down to AAA if you aren't able to compete in the majors. And then the rest of we talked about this: the AAA pitching this year has just got awful. Uh, the the gap between AAA pitching and major league pitching has never been bigger. So now people are starting to say, okay, if that's the case, why are we why are we sending guys to AAA where they can they're going to be facing guys who are so. Uh, there's such a drop off between that level and major league pitching. Mm -hmm. What's the point? I, I I would think Kevin. It probably also depends on organizations. Different organizations have different philosophies. Yeah. You're right. The Jays when the Jays bring somebody up, they're usually lately it's been 26, 27 year old guys. You know, you looked at the Orioles. They're bringing up 20, 21, 22 year old guys. Those guys probably aren't going to be, be a, a bad example. Lead. The Orioles. Or any team. Well, the Orioles are bad uh, but, but But any team. Look, Cincinnati brought up a ton of guys from double-A, I think. Um, Paul Skeens, I mean, he stopped at triple-A uh, yeah. for just a cup of coffee. Yeah. But, yeah, it depends on the player. Yeah. It depends on the player. And, and you know, is it an international signee? Is it a guy you signed at 16 or 17 or 18? Is it a first-round pick? Is it a college See, it was not, it, it was night and day difference when I was in double-A and triple-A. Yeah, well, like most, a, back the, then, guys, yeah. you went... Older yeah, guys were all in, in AAA. The experience okay. level was off the charts. Like, let's talk most about, of them guys have been in the big leagues. Now it's not like that. Okay, let's talk about Kevin Barker's progress as a player. You started out where? You s drafted fourth round? Third round. Third, sorry. I did not well, do that. I was supposed to go first round with Detroit, and they lied. Okay, so uh, drafted third round. Yep. Yeah. Signed with Milwaukee. Yep. Yeah. Ogden, Utah, rookie ball. Rookie I was there ball. for two months. Right. I raked. And then I went to, I skipped low A, went to high A, which was in California. Right. That's Stockton, California. I was there for, uh, I think, a year, maybe okay. less than no, that. But I'm, yeah. And, then, and then, I went went to, then I went to double A. Right. I hit a bunch of homers, drove in a bunch of runs. Uh, but because there was a prospect in triple A, they couldn't bring me to triple A. So mm -hmm. I went back to double A. Okay. 
I hit so well that they released the prospect in AAA, called me up. Right. I was in AAA for three months, and then I got called up in September. So you went bing, 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 bing. Back to bing. And then I went to, yeah. So it was a little. And that used to be. You had, to, you had to earn it. Like yes. Cecil Cooper even came out and said that he's done everything he's, he could possibly do yeah. to warrant the call-up. So it That's was, fair. you know, you the experience level, the the way they use the breaking ball in AAA was totally, it's totally different. They didn't throw nearly as hard when I played in AAA as they do and now. You also, and, you, and that wasn't a thing. You know, pitching down was a thing when I played. But you the, also uh, didn't have, like, Fastball counts were and, a thing. And, yeah, I mean, any of that. You had to go, yeah. you know, you had to go to batting cage and That's get great. blisters to – it, to figure out what it, you were doing wrong. You don't have to do is, that anymore. It is a great question, Jack. And, it I, and, is. I, and I think it's, uh, you know, the... the team, I think they baby have, them too much. That's my opinion. I think they coddle these these prospects way too much. That not... when I Again, I hate to be the old guy on the lawn, but when, not, I, when, I, when, I, when, lawn. I, when I played, it was, it, dude, go play. We're yeah. going to get out of the way. You play. And that's why I say, you, you laugh at me every time I say Home Depot and duct tape. Even when I was a prospect, no, I don't laugh even at when you. I was a prospect, we we took pride in that. Yeah. Like you're hurt, don't go in that room. That's the bad room. You don't go in there and see those people. Now it's the that's the you know that's where they sit you. You don't get to play. That means you don't go to the big league soon enough. So, change games change. Trevor in Toronto, you're on uh, Blair and Bark. I was going to say I, Blue Jays well, talk. You just go ahead. All over. Go ahead. I truly believe that there's one reason why the Blue Jays have struggled so badly this season offensively. And that is when you try to hit home runs, you do not hit home runs. And since spring training, players like Kiermaier, Bichette, Springer, Guerrero, they've been trying to hit home runs. Mm. When this team, it's line drives up the middle and the other way, it's a beautiful thing. But as long as you try to hit home runs, you're going to struggle and you're not going to hit home runs. That's what I think. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I, look, I think there. you could say that. You could say expectations. Some guys get off to slow starts. They grip the bat a little tighter, that kind of thing. And I disagree. Well, I know, because Donnie Baseball said they're not a home run in team. No, not that. Um, I mean, for the longest time, Vladdy was just taking sing- – he was going the opposite way and collecting singles. I don't think Vladdy was trying to hit home runs. He may have early in the year, but then I think – I do think guys get into survival mode at some point where they go, geez, I'm hitting too fast. See, I can't disagree more. I, I, I think, think because, he was yeah, trying? Absolutely. I think because. Kiermaier, we know. He oh, came yeah, out and said that basically, I, and, I, and I said at the time, Kiermaier said that, you know, I, I, I didn't get as much, there wasn't as much interest in me in the offseason as I thought, so I want to go and hit home more yeah. home runs. And I, I remember writing and saying at the time, Kevin Kiermaier, I just want you to do what you did last year. Play great defense, run the bases well, drop yeah, the odd no money, hit it. some singles. No money in it. I know. Vlad, Vladdy had front side pull. You know, the, the follow-through was not conducive to what you're trying to say. He went over there on on accident. It wasn't, okay. wasn't, wasn't on purpose. So he was trying. Oh, absolutely. Like when you ain't hitting them, you, you got the Roger Center. Ball, uh, yeah, I think he's trying to pull balls more in certain okay. counts. I think that's the way you're supposed to say that's that. Fair. That's not, fair. not hitting homers. Something's going on with Bo. I have no idea. Again, I've said this to you, yeah, and don't. I pride myself on on having enough information that I can come on this show. Well, and you also and you, give you an and answer. Bo have, no, I mean I, he's not going to tell me that you know he doesn't like this, that, or the other. No, but you but guys you can, have there's had something, talks. There's in the something. Past. There's there's something going on there that I think is just it's a it's accumulation of a bunch of things that I just you know great hitters don't go three months stinking. They just don't. Yeah. That's they, this is three months, Jeff. And That's it, a mind-boggling, and, and really. And he is not the type of guy who needs to hit 35 home runs to have a successful well, year. Well, he is when the other parts of the, of the lineup stink. But I'm saying. Gets back but, to that, gets back to that gripping right. it tighter and thinking to yourself, if I don't hit a homer, we don't win today. Paul in Oakville, Ontario. I'm concerned that. Under Atkins and Shapiro, the last 10 years have not yielded a strong arm system whatsoever. Mm, What makes us think that that. this draft is going to be any different? And how is things going to improve? I mean, (laughs) draft somebody that doesn't get hurt. They, they've had eight I years mean, of first-rounders that have not been good. Yeah, we went through this list. I mean, their pitchers get the pitchers. Alec Manoa, we're going to disagree in this. 
To me, Alec Manoa was a successful draft because he got him to the majors yeah. and he helped. Yeah, you could have had Gunnar Henderson. Sure. But every other team could have had Gunnar Henderson. You could Henderson. have had Gunnar Henderson. This is the point. Uh, other teams did worse. Eight years other of missing teams is did the point. Worse. Other teams did worse than Alec Manoa. And, and, and at that point in time, you had Bo Bichette as your shortstop. I mean, I'm not going to get into it. You're right. But everybody could have had Gunnar Henderson. Uh, Alec Manoa, to me, was a successful draft. You signed him. He came up. He helped you contend. He was a Cy Young finalist. That, to me, is, Boy, a, that to me is a successful seemed draft. Seemed like it was run for Vinton from the start. Basically, well, That's they what drafted. It like. they, they drafted a bunch of pitchers, and the pitchers and, and the pitchers are hurt. I mean, Barrier. I mean, I can't even pronounce his name. Is hurt. Uh, Ricky Tiedemann's been hurt. Uh, you know, uh, everybody DJ loves Zoic. I mean, who? What? Who? Well, that was, when? What? That was that their draft? I don't think yeah, that so was. For, yeah, that's like 2018. I looked it up today. Like, yeah, like there's that, okay, yeah, but. Uh, like 2016 from from now. That's the eight years, right? Yeah, although, coming into this although year again. Uh, well, I mean, we're going to get technical here. Zoic was 2016, so I, yeah, that was their first. That was Ross's first draft, I guess, 2016. Okay, um, but uh, you know, rookie Tiedemann. Yeah, you're right. Look, the 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 prospect everybody really likes. Frankly, the only guy everybody people Namala. list now as a prospect is Namala. Yeah. Uh, a high school. But he's kid. so young. How do you know that? Well, exactly. Well, who knows? But I mean, that that's that is my point. No, they have not. I listen. There's a reason this minor league system is in the bottom tenth and yeah. is rated the in the bottom tenth, twenty fourth, twenty fifth in baseball. Yeah. And they have not done a good job replenishing it. They've done okay apparently in the international market. People seem to like some of their international signings. That's not the same as a draft. So I, I, I cannot disagree with you. And, you know, we are going to hear. And this, this drives me nuts because we heard it with Houston. Well, Houston was so good because they sucked for so long. Yeah, but you know what? You look at the players they brought in. They hit it out of the park Homers. in the international draft. There the, it the, is. Well, no, they, they, they got Framber Valdez. That's they, what I'm Christian saying. Adier, like they yeah. hit homers on the they guys they homers. brought in. I'm yeah, sorry, I talking about homers. No, yeah. they do that and, because but, they hit homers. But they also, well, no, but on the guys that they brought in. But that's those the point. those weren't draft picks. Those are guys they signed cheap. Those are the guys they scouted in, uh, scouted yeah. internationally. And and my point is, you're going to hear that with the Orioles. Well, of course, the Orioles are good. They finished last for so often. Yeah, but you know what? Tampa Bay doesn't finish last all the time. They make draft picks. The Yankees get guys up in the uh, up in the majors. They don't finish last all the time. So yeah, I'm I, the uh, the the farm system and the drafting yeah drafting has, development needs has, to get a little bit better. Has I think, not is, been good. Is the colors? It point, has right? not been. Yeah, good. it is. You got to get a home run every once in a while. You've got you've had five or six. How many years of Bo and Vladdy been here? Let's just you've had five years of Bo and Vladdy, folks. And in that time, and Vladdy was Vladdy was a signing from Alex Anthopoulos. Mm -hmm. In that time, you've had you've had five years to kind of get your ducks lined up for the inevitability that one of these two guys are going to go. Wave. Yeah, and it it ain't working. I mean, Arelvis Martinez is the closest you've had, and who the hell knows what he is because he he failed the PED test. So yeah, I I I, I can't disagree, and, and and at all. And one of the things you were promised by this group was you were going to have an assembly line of prospects so that when guys were ready to move on, you'd have somebody else there. Um, hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, it, you look it, at it, them names that they've drafted in that for that, those first couple of names, every, every draft it's Rick and Windsor, Ontario. Well, I like you guys to discuss is, is our show. Hmm. I mean, he's having a heck one heck of a bad year this year. I think he should be traded. I know Kevin Kiermeyer is probably not going to be with uh, the Jays next year. Mm -hmm. and, and with catchers, I think that if you're going to trade a catcher, which they probably won't, it should be Kirk and not Jansen, because you can get Jansen for maybe another million dollars a year. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate mm -hmm. your answers, guys. Yeah, yeah you ain't getting Danny for that. Nobody, for wants for Nobody wants Kirk. Nobody wants Kirk. Yeah, I mean they, they tried. The they same, went down that road already. They see, they see the same thing we see. Yeah, nobody wants Kirk. He's a he's a Var, Varsho backup catcher with very limited Var, power. Varsho, you can deal with Varsho because of the way he plays um, defense and baseball IQ. If you're bringing I'm with in other you 100%. things and don't hit him second, fourth, fifth, 
Like I think eighth there's and a, ninth. I'll tell you what. I think there's Six. a better chance Dalton Varsho is here in two years Absolutely. than Bo. Absolutely. Uh, and here's the thing with Dal- here's the thing with Dalton Varsho. My friend, Mr. Barker's right. On if you could construct this team the way you want to construct it, all I want Dalton Varsho to do is hit eighth in my lineup. Play the hell out of defense. Hit 20 homers. Steal some bases. Hit 20 homers. Yeah. And I don't care what you do with batting. Nobody hit, cares. Hit 20 homers and hit yeah. 225 and steal bases. Boom. That's what Dalton Varsho is. I think Nailed Dalton Varsho is a lot of utility. And, you know, in terms of trading. Well, I'll yeah, tell you, you play I'll, against it, a ton it, of lefties. Just, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if, if if you trade Dalton Varsho, you're going to be looking to replace Dalton yeah. Varsho. So I, I, with Dalton, another Dalton. Yeah. Dalton Varsho to me is here. I'm going to work with him. I'm happy with what he gives me. Um, it's, not, it's the top of the order you got to work on, yeah. not the bottom of the order. And, and Kirk and Jan, I mean, Danny Jansen is going to cost a fair amount of money. Uh, and and I don't think well, we've talked Somebody's going to want Danny for what the number is. That That's the intriguing and, part and, of this. And again, you've got you've got to remember that the it's thing about streaky. Danny Jansen. It's a collision guy. And because he's kind of figured, he figured he's figured out what he is as a hitter. Like we, you know, Eric All Kratz made, Eric Kratz made the point. You know, Danny Jansen is a guy you can bring in as your number two catcher and sometimes DH. Again, if you're the Phillies and you're not going to have JT Realmuto for two months, Danny Jansen's going to come in. He's going to be okay defensively. Yeah. You know, all he's got all the intangibles, all the good he stuff. He could go about two Danny weeks Jansen. and hit eight Bingo. homers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But he could go two weeks and never get hit. That, that think of it. Yeah. But guys like that. But get you don't made. have to for the Phillies. That's the point, exactly. right? It's the same yep. thing with Varsho. Like, they're not, again, when you put pressure on guys to hit cleanup. Uh, I, want, like, I want to get, I'm intrigued by this on? call. So uh, uh, let's squeeze Evan in Toronto in. I think we got a couple. Let's get Evan in yeah, Toronto. Sure. We'll in. Make time. Listening to your show back before spring training started, we heard Bo Bichette come on and say that he wanted to be a more of a power hitter, hitting more home runs and driving that offense a bit more. So to me, Bo Bichette's struggles really aren't that much of a surprise. So, Kevin, my question for you is when you've been spending your entire off-season training to change your swing and getting more power out of it instead of being that singles hitter, how hard is it to make that change in oh, season go. to going back to what you were doing before? Love the show. Look forward to your response. Yeah, Thanks, yeah, you got it, like a minute yeah it ain't hard. I mean, be, they, they, that'd be hard for some other people. He's not going up there every swing and trying to hit a homer. He's going up there at certain counts. Oh, oh, down a run. Sixth inning, I'm trying to hit a homer. Uh, after I hit a double to right center off and a he, fastball. And why is he doing this? Because he want to get paid. Uh, you know, absolutely. Like, you got you to gotta do things to the pull side occasionally because that's what everybody's telling you to do is to pull the ball in the air in certain counts. He's not trying to do that every count. I had this conversation with him in spring training for 15 minutes. He said, I'm not trying to do that oh, oh to... You know, if my bat lasts 10 pitches, but if I hit a double to right center off a fastball, my first at bat, and we're down a run, and this guy I know is going to flip me a breaking ball early in the count, yeah. Like, I might try and get Frisky Party out front and do some damage to the pull side in the air. There's nothing wrong with that. His struggles has nothing to do with that. It's between the ears. They, I, For me, anyway, ain't mechanical. It's right there. Yeah, I I bow to your expertise when it comes to hitting. Yeah. There's a lot going on in there. Yeah. A lot going on. Yeah, I think that. Uh, and I think the moving around the order thing, good luck with that, dude. Good luck. Yeah, that's a lot to ask. Oh, yeah. Run, produce, Jeff, and then get on base the next day. That's all I'm asking you to do. Stay hot. It's a long week. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's a good thing you got me carrying this show for a while. But... I'm surprised you can walk out with your back. I won't. I'll be bow-legged running uh have yourself a great weekend jay's in seattle it's a fun series if you're listening to us on podcast etc etc please rate and review and if you're listening to us on podcast or whatever and you're in seattle have a great time cheer for the blue jays go to proski proski you'll see dan shulman and hazel there say hi to them get a picture taken enjoy your weekend